Soteriology, study of salvation. It's going to be lesson number five. And we're going to be on your page number six. We're going to be starting with a Roman numeral two. It's called faith. We finished up with the word repentance. We took a couple, wings, a couple of Tuesday nights and dealt with the word repentance. This all has to do with salvation. Uh, uh, faith has to do with salvation. Another word we're going to deal with is regeneration has to do with salvation, and so on and so forth. So, just a few more Tuesday nights on this subject of salvation, soteriology, and uh, the very important subject, as we've already stated, very important, because so many people are confused about what it takes to be saved and go to heaven when they die, and make sure they are for sure of that. So many people, you ask them, you going to heaven? Well, I hope so. I think so. Well, maybe so. And uh, 1 John chapter 5 says we can know so. And, uh, but anyway, turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll start with the word faith. Hebrews chapter number 11. We'll get our definition of the word faith. Hebrews. If you've ever wondered who's supposed to brew the coffee in the morning, Hebrews. <laughs> That was pretty good, wasn't it? All right. Hebrews chapter 11. <laughs> Verse number 1. Now this is real simple. Now faith is. This gives us the definition. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh, the evidence of things not seen. Alright, so you've got two things here. You've got evidence and you've got substance. Evidence looks toward things hoped for in the future. Uh, substance looks toward and uh, relates to things not seen. Um, let me put it this way. If you can see it, it's not faith. In other words, once we get to heaven, it ceases to be faith anymore. Once you, it becomes reality. Once you see it, um, then it ceases to be faith. Right now, we trust God by faith. Um, you say, how do you know God is up there? Have you ever seen Him? I've never seen Him. Well, why do you believe in God? It's by faith. Uh, the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Um, now, if I had a debt, if I owed a $1,000, and uh, owed a debt, and someone goes up and pays it for me, wherever it is. Let's just say it's the courthouse. And I owe a $1,000 speeding ticket or whatever. Running a stop sign, didn't have a seatbelt on, whatever. And uh, I owed that and couldn't pay it. Somebody went up there and paid it. I didn't see them go up there and pay it. But they called me on the phone and said, Brother Jeremy, I got that paid for you. Everything's all right. Well, I don't go to court. Because that man done told me it's paid. I didn't see him pay it. Well, how do you know he did? It's by faith. My actions prove what I believe. If I didn't believe he paid it, um, or sometimes if we question somebody, we'd call up the court. Did so-and-so come up there? I just want to make sure now. I just want to make sure that he come up there and pay that so I don't have to come to court. Um, that's not faith. But you acting as if, okay, you paid it, all right, thank you. And don't show up to court. Your actions prove what you believe. You believe it by faith. And um, so anyway, the substance of things hoped for. The substance is the Word of God. Everything we believe about heaven. You ever seen heaven before? No. Uh, how do you know you're going there? I mean, you see, it's by faith. The substance. This Bible says, if I trust Christ, I go to heaven. This Bible says that once I'm saved, I'm eternally secure. This Bible says that there is a God in heaven. This Bible says that Jesus Christ did come down on the cross. I didn't see Him down on the cross. It wasn't there. That was over 2,000 years ago. But I believe it by faith. And my actions prove what I believe by faith. Um, so, uh, once you can see it, it no longer is of faith. Now, remember this. I think this is in your notes. Faith comes into being by believing what God says, seeking God, and expecting reward of Him. Now, you're there in Hebrews 11. Look at verse 6. 
But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Uh, it's all by faith. You'll look in chapter 11, they call it the hall of faith. Uh, chapter 4, by faith able. Ch uh, excuse me, verse 4, by faith able. Verse 5, by faith any. Verse 7, by faith Noah. Uh, verse 8, by faith Abraham and so on and so forth. It's all through uh, chapter number 11. By faith, by faith. Um, now remember this. I don't know if this is in your notes or not. Faith is what you believe about God accompanied by the actual doing of what you say you believe. The only way a person can produce evidence of his faith is to just demonstrate it by behavior. Alright, let me give you an example. Everybody in this room right now except me and Tommy uh, has exercised faith. I believe, I walked into this room and I honestly believe, Zella, I honestly believe that chair right there will hold me up. I honestly believe that. I do believe it will. Now, am I exercising faith in that chair while I'm standing here? No. If I could turn around and sit down in that chair, I'm exercising, I am demonstrating what I actually believe. A lot of people say, yes, I believe Jesus Christ can get me to heaven. I believe He can. Well, are you trusting Him? Are you, have you sat down in Christ? Well, no, I mean, I believe He, I believe he can get you to heaven. See, the devil believes Amen. and trembles, the Bible says. But the problem is the devil's not sitting down in the chair. Amen. A lot of people can believe God. I believe God. I believe in God. I believe in God. Everybody in the world believes in God. Just ask them. Yeah, I believe in God. I believe. Here's what they. Here's the phrase I love to hear. They say, "I believe in a good Lord." Yeah. <laughs> or they'll say, "Yeah, I believe in the man upstairs." <coughs> I don't know. I've never heard anybody say that in here. I, I think it's disrespectful. But I mean, whatever you will say. But I think it's disrespectful. He's not the man upstairs. He's God. Yeah. And um, so anyway. If, if you fly from one city to another, and uh, let me ask you all a question. How many of you have ever flown in an airplane? All right, let me ask you this. How many of you, when you got on the airplane, went up to the front, opened the door, and made sure there was a pilot and a co-pilot sitting up there making sure, did you ask them, can I see your educational certificate? Can I see your credentials? Do you have a license to drive this thing? <laughs> Did anybody do that? You just went in, sat down. You didn't, even, you didn't even know if there was a person sitting up there. What'd you do? You just exercised faith. I believe that I'm fixing to fly from Memphis to Dallas. I don't even know if there's a man up there flying this thing. And matter of fact, let me just encourage you a little bit. The airplane you're sitting on was put together by the manufacturer who had the lowest bid. <laughs> and so you're sitting on this airplane you don't even know if there's a pilot up there but you sat down in faith or by faith and expecting okay in two hours I'm fixing to arrive at the Dallas airport you believe that your actions prove what you believe if you didn't believe there was a, a fellow on there that could fly if you didn't believe it was going to get you to Dallas ticket you'd have never got bought a ticket and got on the thing but your actions prove what you believe. Now, that goes with the uh, 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 talking about soteriology. Have you ever seen Jesus Christ? No? Guess what? He's flying this thing. I've never seen him. But he told me, hallelujah, I'm feeling something. He told me, if I, he would buy the ticket if I wanted to get on this plane and head from here to heaven. Amen. I don't even know. I don't. I know he's flying it. I I can't see him flying it, but I know he's flying it. And he guarantees me. The substance guarantees me that he's going to get me there. And he's flying. All I'm doing is sitting down in a chair, relaxing, drinking a glass of sweet tea. That's faith. <coughs> uh, substance things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. 
Uh, when your friend tells you that he'll meet you or she'll meet you at the park at 3 o'clock, uh, you take him at his word and believe that he'll do what he said he'll do and you show up at 3 o'clock at the park. If you didn't think he would do what he said he would do, you'd never show up at the park to see him. Same difference. We walk over here. I don't know how electricity works. I have no idea. But I just, by faith, over there and flip the switch. We do it without thinking. <coughs> If you didn't think the light switch worked, you wouldn't go over there and try it. But we believe it works. So we flip the switch. Uh, I don't know how a car works. Uh, Marvin, some of these guys, they can tell you how a car works. I just get in, put the key in, by faith and trust that this thing's fixing to start. Your action proves what you believe. By faith. Um, now, uh, look at Hebrews chapter 11. You're already there. Look at verse 4. By faith, Abel offered <coughs> unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. That's his brother. Uh, by which he obtained witness uh, that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Um, you say, is Abel in heaven? Why, sure. How do you know? By faith, Abel did and believed God and proved what he believed by his actions. God requires blood. God requires blood. Old Testament, New Testament, it don't make any difference. God requires blood. Well, Abel, Cain and Abel, Abel brought a blood sacrifice because that's what God requires. Cain brought uh, the fruit of the ground. He brought turnips. You ever heard the phrase, you ever wondered where we get the phrase, you can't get blood out of a turnip? <laughs> that comes from the Bible. Uh, Cain brings fruit of the ground. And God rejects that offering. Why? There's no blood there. Uh, Cain knew that uh, God required blood, but Cain said, I'm going to do it my own way. Right. And uh, Cain went to hell. And Abel went to heaven. How do you know? By faith. Abel did what God said to do and he exercised and he, and he demonstrated what he believed by his actions. Um, number three in your notes, we should walk by faith. Now you don't have to turn to this verse. It's found in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Old Testament saints, they walk by sight. New Testament, we walk by faith. You say, prove that. Downton Thomas, remember? Downton Thomas missed church one Sunday. And uh, Jesus showed up. That's why you should never miss church, because Jesus might show up and you miss it. And so Jesus showed up, and Thomas wasn't there. So they're telling Thomas about it a little later. It's found in John chapter number 20. And uh, Thomas says, I'm not going to believe unless I see that's Old Testament. And um, he says, I ain't going to believe until I see it. Moses, the burning bush. Remember that story? Moses had to see something. God said, or Moses says, uh, God, how are they going to know that I've been talking to you and you are who you say you are and all of that? God says, Moses, what's that in your hand? Oh, it's a rock. He said, throw it down. And he threw it down and it turned into a snake. Remember the story? Exodus chapter 4. And then God says, Moses, pick it back up. He reaches down, picks it back up, it turns back to a rod again. Why? Sight. See. They walk by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Um, you know what the problem a lot of times today is? People today are wanting to see something. Amen. They're wanting to see somebody turn a rod into a snake. They're wanting to see the miracles. They're wanting to see miraculous things happen. And I'm not saying that God don't do that. To him. He does. He don't do it quite like He did here. But He does it in different ways. But folks, if you've got to see it to believe, you're not operating in faith. Amen. Once God has to show it to you, and just, you just say, Oh, I tell you what, if... if if, if God would just come down while I'm sleeping in my bed and, 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 and roost like a rooster on top of my bedpost and speak to me and say, yes, I want you to preach. 
or I want you to teach the Sunday school class, or I want you to live. Folks, if God has to do that so you will believe, then you're not walking by faith. You're walking by sight. And so many people today want to see something. I want to see something. I want to see somebody get knocked down. And, and I'm not making fun. Don't go out here and say, Brother Jimmy's making fun. I'm saying if that's what you desire to see and that's what you have to see to believe you, God says that's my sight, not my faith. God, or Jesus told Thomas, said, Blessed are they that believe and have not seen. Yes. Thomas had to see Jesus before he believed. What about us over here in the Old Testament hadn't seen Jesus? I believe he's there. By faith. All right, let's move on. I'm trying to get somewhere. Uh, now remember this. I don't know, is this in your notes? We're saved by faith. We're kept by faith. And we're to walk by faith. Now we're saved by faith. That's Ephesians 2.89. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should vote. You can't work your way to heaven. If you could, when you get to heaven, you can say, oh, look what I did. I got myself up here. Nobody's going to be able to boast in heaven. We're going to walk into heaven with our heads down going, I'm just so thankful Jesus saved my soul so I could be here. Uh, we're kept by faith. That's 1 Peter 1, 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. Uh, now, I don't know how many of you believe in eternal security, but I do. I believe the Bible believes in eternal security. Amen. There's too many verses who are kept by the power of God. If God can't keep you, then you didn't get saved by the same Jesus that I got saved by. Amen. Amen. The Jesus that saved me has the power to keep. And the Bible says, uh, For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day. Very simple. Uh, and then we're to walk by faith. And that's 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We've already discussed it. We walk by faith, not by sight. Do you define the eternal security a little further? Uh, as in... I mean, what, just like a dictionary definition. Um, all right. I can uh, put it to you uh, this way. Um, first, John... 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Verse 13. 5 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Alright? If you believe on the name of the Son of God, then are you saved or lost? Say, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, uh, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Verse 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we should ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. Confidence that ye may know. We mm -hmm. see the words. Uh, and things of that nature. I'm looking for Romans eight nine. Yep, Romans eight nine. Um, uh, if any man, if well, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of His. <clears throat> yeah. Now, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of His. Uh, Ephesians four thirty. Uh, says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of, uh, of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. Sealed. Um, uh, Ephesians 1 uh, 13 is another one. Um, anyway. How much? Romans 8, 35 to 39. Yeah, Romans 8, that's a good one. We got about that one. Uh, verse 35 of Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, 
persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, sword. As it is written, for thy sake we have killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep as a slaughter. Verse 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It don't get much better than that. In Christ. Once you get in Christ, you, you become a part of... And think about this. And this, we're not... <coughs> anyway. Think about this. The Bible says once you become saved, once you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your heart and save, you become a member of the body of Christ. Okay? Think about this. Jesus, His body, up there. When you got saved... You became the index finger of Jesus Christ when you got saved. Now, all right, two weeks later, you lose him. Jesus' finger falls off. <laughs> now he's got four fingers instead of five. Uh, you get saved again. You get right, ask Jesus for you, you come down, get saved again. Boop, his finger comes back. You with me? It don't happen that way. Amen. Anyway. <clears throat> and here's my other thing on the people that say they can lose it. They don't practice what they really preach. Amen. They don't practice it. The people that say you can lose your salvation, number one, can never tell me what, what sin will cause you to lose it. I need to know which sin it is that causes you to lose it, so I don't want to, I don't want to do that sin. Uh, will lying, will that make you lose it? Oh, no, no, lying, you, you can lie, and you, you know, that won't cause you to lose it. Uh, so it has to, be, has to be worse than that. Oh, yeah, it's got to be worse than that. Well, which one is it? Well, I don't know. I mean... <coughs> um, Either we trust in Christ or we're not trusting in Christ. But here, here's, here's the thing that some people say, well, you, you can lose your salvation. Well, the people that say you can lose it, they come down and get saved, you know, ask Jesus Christ to come to heart and save. Then they get the Baptist to preach or baptize them and, and that. Okay. Two weeks later, they've done something real bad and they lose their salvation. Well, when they get ready to get saved again, they never come down to the front again and get baptized again. Whatever you did to get saved, if you lose it, you've got to do it again. <clears throat> and I, I know a fellow on television believes he can lose it. Believes he can lose it. And boy, he messed up. Boy, did he ever mess up. So he got on that uh, on the TV and he said, I'm going to tell everybody I'm sorry. I've sinned. I, uh, you know, but he didn't get saved again. He didn't ask. He didn't come down the altar, ask Jesus Christ to come to his heart and save him again. He never got baptized again. That's right. Even the people that believe him lose it. Don't uh, right. act like they believe what they say they believe. <clears throat> I don't care if you believe that. If you want to believe that, that's fine. But at least when you do lose it, do whatever you did to get it the first time. Do it again. Yeah. Amen. Don't be a hypocrite about it. Amen. Jesus never died. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but how many times are you going to lose it before you quit start doing it? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Anyway. Why are you going to lose it? Why don't you want to give it up? Touchdown, son, I believe in rededicating your life. Some people, when they get saved, yeah. Especially when they get saved at a young age. Uh, they get out in the world and, and uh, just like the prodigal son. Question people. Prodigal son left the father's house, backslid, went out into the hog pen. Question, was the prodigal son still the son of that father Amen. while he was in the hog pen? Amen. Did he cease being a son in the hog pen? No. No. But a person that's saved can't stay in the hog pen without the Holy Spirit that lives inside of them whooping their backside. Amen. 
And that man in the hog pen, son, he, he got a whooping. And God brought him down, and the Bible says, Luke 15, when he came to himself, right. he said, I have sinned against my father. That's I'm going back to the house. He was a son when he left. He was a son while he was in the hog pen. And he was still a son when he come back. Amen. 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 So you're on the way to heaven and tear out, you know, plane. And you tear out all the seats, but you're still, you know, you tear up the whole plane, but you still go. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, sometimes people on an airplane, you're on this airplane. Jesus is driving, but you don't know the him. You ain't never seen him up there. You didn't go up there to check to say, hey, you sure you can get me here? But you're sitting in on the plane. Well, you get up to go to the bathroom, you trip and fall. On your way to the bathroom. Well, when you trip and fall, did you fall out of the airplane? No, you get back up, go to the bathroom, dust yourself off, come back, sit down. Sometimes on this way to heaven, yes, we do trip and fall. Amen. But I didn't fall out of the airplane. Anyway. Alright. How do we get on that? Oh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Alright. Capital B. The importance of faith. The importance of faith. In your notes. The importance of faith. Uh, Hebrews 11.6. We probably already turned away from there. But you, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right. Um, the importance of faith. How important is it? Very important. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, watch this. I know we just came from there too, but 1 John chapter 5, you'll need to see this. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which He hath testified of His Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in Himself. Amen. He that believeth not God hath not have, excuse me, hath made Him a liar because He believed not the record that God gave of His Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. Amen. Amen. And this life is in His Son. Yeah. Now verse 12, all one syllable words. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. All one syllable words. There's enough gospel right there in verse 12 to save the world. Amen. Now, here's my point. The importance of faith. When you got saved, look at verse 9. If we receive the witness of men, okay, in the courtroom, I used to work in the courtroom, call witnesses up to the front for your case. You got a witness, all right? You know what? You know what the court depends upon? The court, the judge, is depending upon someone to come up and say, "Yes, I saw Jeremy run into the back. He was texting. He wasn't paying attention, and he ran over that woman, and uh, I saw it with my own eyes." That carries a lot of weight in court. Okay? If we receive the witness of men, we accept that witness that we heard in the courtroom. The witness of God is greater. If that carries a lot of weight for the judge in the courtroom, the witness of God is greater. Well, verse 10 says, uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 10 says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. So, when you get saved, you have the witness of God in here, inside. So guess what happens? Let's say you're sitting in church. The witness of God is in here. You hear the preacher say something real good, and you have this uh, something inside you going, Hey, man! Amen. <laughs> That's the witness of God saying, I agree with that. Amen. Now, you, everybody does. I'm not saying you have to. Some people are vocal. Some people say amen in church. Some people don't. But there's something inside you, whether you say it out loud or not, you're sitting there. The preacher says something, you go. So Y'all have even done it tonight. 
when you read a verse and some of it's like, hey man, that's right. Something on the inside's going, I agree with that. Yes, right. Whatever's in here is agreeing with what that man's saying in his heart uh, coming out of his Bible. Alright, All right, the same is true. If someone gets up and says something that ain't right, there's something on the inside that goes, oh, hang on a minute. That's right. Amen. The Holy Spirit is on the witness stand in your heart. Amen. And He's already swore. Tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, except you got. And then when you hear something that don't line up with this, the Holy Spirit's like, uh, Your Honor, that ain't right. Amen. That ain't how it happened. Yeah. You see. And then when your preacher does say something like, you know, like right on line or whatever, or the Sunday school date or whatever, the Holy Spirit on the witness stand inside is going, your Honor, that is exactly how it happened. Right. We believe the witness of men. We receive the witness of men. It carries a lot of weight in court. The witness of God is greater yeah. than that. Uh, so that's the importance of faith. Now, you don't have to turn to this because you know the verse. 2 Timothy 2.15 It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Let me ask you a question. If there's a right way to divide the Bible, is there a wrong way to do it? Okay. So, God says, the way faith works is, faith has to be rightly divided. God told Noah in the Old Testament to build an ark. Have you ever built one? The Bible says to you say, you have to write, by faith, Hebrews 11, by faith, Noah built that ark. Okay, all right, folks, we got to go build one. If we all, if y'all want to get to heaven when you die, we got to go build an ark because the Bible says to. Amen. Does the Bible say to? Yes. <clears throat> Rightly dividing the word of truth. Who's we talking to? He's talking to Noah. Right. Yeah. I'm over here. Noah was back there. I've got some more revelation. I've got the whole Bible. Noah didn't have the whole Bible. He didn't have any Bible. Right. You understand? God told Abraham, by faith Abraham, Hebrews 11, by faith Abraham, God told him to take his only son Isaac up on the, on the mountain and uh, sacrifice his own son. Uh-oh. What are we going to do now? Do you have to do that to prove your faith to God? No. Abraham did. I'm over here. You see, rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, and that's very important. That's why. That's why. When you drive down to Dyersburg, Tennessee, you've got all kind of churches, all kind of isms, all kind of schisms, all this, some whatever. Everybody does something in it. And they say, they hold up the same Bible I got and say, we're preaching the Bible. And they probably are. They are. But sometimes you can preach a part of the Bible that wasn't talking to you. Amen. Amen. I'll give you for instance. The book of Leviticus says, when you come to church, you don't come on, on Sunday, you come on Saturday. And when you come on Saturday, you bring a lamb. And sacrifice it in front and front and in front of the priest. The Bible says that. I could get up Sunday morning and preach out of the book of Leviticus and have everybody so confused they wouldn't know what to do. Amen. People, do y'all want to be saved and go to heaven? All right. Leviticus says, y'all should have brought a sacrifice with you this morning. And he's got a goat. Y'all bring a goat, a calf, goat, turtle dove. What what y'all bring? Well, I didn't bring nothing. Well, why didn't you? The Bible says to. Rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. And uh, it's very simple. On this side of the cross, you know what I bring to church every Sunday morning? Jesus. My lamb. Yeah. I am bringing a sacrifice. Right. You don't see him. He's in here. I bring him every Sunday. Amen. Nothing in my hands I bring simply to the cross I cling. Amen. These guys over here brought a lamb. I do too. Except you don't see it. I bring him. He is the, That's why John said, Behold the Lamb of God 
that taketh away the sin of the world. Yeah. You have to rightly divide faith. All right. Now, capital C. Capital C. B was an importance of faith. Capital C. The dispensational importance of faith. Well, that sort of goes on to what we just talked about. Let me give you um, uh, the uh, shortcut version before we take a break here in just a little bit. When Jesus came to this earth, uh, He was born in Bethlehem. And uh, let's put the little star right there. He was born in Bethlehem. There He was. He was uh, raised up at the age of 30 uh, years old. He was baptized by John the Baptist and started His earthly ministry. He called him out 12 apostles, all Jews. He called out 12 apostles. And the reason that Jesus was born was to save his people from their sin. And the way he was going to do that was to bring in a kingdom. That's why he taught his disciples how to pray. He taught them this, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want Jerusalem to be done and operated like everything's operated up in heaven. Well, guess what? It don't operate down here on earth like it does in heaven. <clears throat> Got news for you. They don't abort babies up there. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. And we could go a little further, but we'll leave that alone for right now. Tell what unless the Lord tells me to say. And up in heaven, they're not marrying two men or two women either. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. The Lord did tell me to say it. <laughs> so we're doing a lot of stuff down here. And they don't do it back. Jesus was trying to bring in a kingdom. A, a Jewish kingdom. Very Jewish. When you um, when you read uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's real Jewish. Yeah. Not Jew uh, you'll read over there in Matthew uh, uh, is it 10 or 15 where the Syphonician woman, she was a Gentile like us, she comes in, Jesus don't even pay her own attention. So that's, that's ugly for him to do. He shouldn't treat her that way. You can't bring in a kingdom with a bunch of Gentiles. So he wasn't concerned with her at the time. Right. It wasn't that he wasn't concerned, he wasn't concerned with her at the time. Right. He's trying to bring in a Jewish kingdom. Well, guess what? He says, by the way, I'm here to be your next king. And uh, the, the, the rabbis and the set and the, and the Pharisees and Sadducees, oh no, you're not. We have no king but Caesar. Caesar. And John 1.12 says, but, uh, um, no, John 1.11 says, uh, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Right. Amen. What did they do to him? Crucified. Boom. Nailed him to the cross. Well, okay. Jesus says, all right, you don't do me that way. I'm going to open the door for Gentiles. And um, um, uh, it was very Jewish here. And then uh, you got Peter that preaches on the day of Pentecost, and he's trying, you know, this, that, and the other. And uh, eventually, by the time you get to Acts chapter number 9, Apostle Paul gets saved. Amen. Paul gets saved. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. All right, let me give you the principles. Well, right, let me keep on going for a second. Acts chapter number 10, there's a fellow by the name of Cornelius that gets saved. In Acts chapter 10. He's a Gentile. Right. Uh, Acts 16. The Philippian jailer. Philippian. He's a Gentile. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Uh, and on we go. So we move from Jewish to Gentiles and ultimately to the deal of body of Christ. Um, uh, you know, before the rapture happens. Picture it this way. And this is, and I'm gonna move on. If you don't see what we're doing, uh, you just hang on. We'll get into it some more later. Picture it this way: When Jesus was born, he was baptized with John. Picture a basketball game. 
He takes 12 apostles. Jesus is the coach. He puts 12 apostles out on the playing floor. And they're playing basketball. And uh, so they, what they do, they wind up crucifying the coach. And so the coach says, okay, time out, big guys. Time out. This ain't working. I mean, this ain't working. So, y'all, go sit down, and we'll bring in the second string. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel something on the second string. Well, who's the second string? Amen. So, who's playing ball right now? We are. We're on the playing floor. We're playing ball. Jesus is the coach. Right. Today, God's interest. Now watch. Before the cross, very heavily Jewish. He was concentrating on them Jews. Well, after they rejected, after they rejected, now it's almost like God's not even concerned with the Jew anymore. They're over there doing their, everybody's whooping, you know, whooping up on them. Yeah. It's like God's concern is with the church. Amen. Well, see, over here it was Jewish, and I'm not concerned about this Gentile woman. It's right reversed. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. This side of the cross, he's like Jews. It's sort of like they're in timeout, like you stuck a child in timeout. Go over and stick your nose in the corner. In the corner. <laughs> now wait. Them Jews, they're in timeout. Right. They got their nose in the corner. They're still God's children. Right. Don't mess with them. Right. Even though they're in trouble. Look, I've been in trouble a bunch of times. There's kids around here getting in trouble, and their parents get on to them, and I go try to pick with them, and their parents are like, uh, 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 they're in trouble. I'm like, oops, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you know, they're on punishment right now. I said, oh, okay. You, know, anyway. you don't mess with somebody's kids even while they're, yes, Israel messed up and crucified the Messiah. Yeah. They messed up. But don't mess with them. They're still God's kids. Amen. Kids, children. So they're in time out while we're playing here. Well, when the rapture takes place and the second string goes out, guess who comes back to the playing floor? Amen. To finish up Daniel's 70th week. See, the ball game ain't over. First string, sit, on, sit down, put your nose, you know, y'all in trouble. The second stream comes in. We're going to play until the rapture. Rapture happens. It's like the buzzer goes off. The halftime buzzer goes off. Right. Well, guess what? Jews, here we go. Yeah. Well, where'd the second stream go? I don't know. They just went through the sky. I have no idea where they went. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They can't play if we're not here. Right. Uh, so, guys, are y'all ready? Y'all ready to come play? Jews come back on the floor. Daniel's 70th week. And they finish up the ball game. That's the best way I can understand. I, I was telling it to you. All right. Now, on your, on your notes, you got a little chart right there. It's in black and white. I wish I could do it. Mine is in color. If you want to come look at mine at the break, it's in color. It's got, you know, red, blue, yellow, whatever. I wish I could do that in color for you. But, that basically explains what I just explained in more detail. Uh, and so that's whatever page, uh, page 7 in your notes. If you want to look at that. Alright. Now, uh, well, let me go over this. I've been over this before, but we're fixing a break. Uh, the Jews rejected God the Father in the Old Testament. God the Father in the Old Testament. They rejected God the Son on the cross. And the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter number 2. Anybody take a guess who they rejected? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And that's when God said, okay guys, time out. You rejected the Father in the Old Testament. You rejected the Son here. And he rejected the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter number 2. Time out. Hang on. We're about to do something different. Y'all go stick your nose in the corner. Let me save the Apostle Paul and let him write 13 books, Romans through Philemon, 
to the Gentile. church. Yeah. Gentile. Body of Christ. Amen. And um, you remember, you, all right, this is a lot of information. You remember, you wonder why, okay, they crucified Jesus. Why did they, wonder why God gave them another opportunity in Acts chapter number 2. Okay, remember, Jesus on the cross, he prays this, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So God grants that request. Gives them one more opportunity. Yeah. Acts chapter 2, Peter preaches. They reject Peter's message. He can go a step further. They rejected Stephen in Acts 7, and they stoned him. Yes, sir. They didn't come down to the they altar. They all, everybody comes to the altar when Stephen preached. But when they came down to the altar, they wasn't kneeling down to the altar getting saved. They had stones in their hand. Yeah. That's why I watch. When I give the invitation, I watch. <laughs> Make sure ain't nobody bringing a song book or something with them. <laughs> All right, let's take a few minutes to break. We'll get back in it in a minute.